You know, um, sometimes when I'm in the car, I have to turn down the volume on the radio so I can see better. <laughs> I've, I've, you know, we get to an age, or at least I got to an age. Um, things like remembering to turn the microphone on, well, you know, I'll do better next time, I hope. I want to welcome you all, each and every one of you, to Grace Congregational United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Whether you're here in person or you're, in here, you're here online, we welcome you to this time of worship. We have a few, two, I think, announcements. I would invite those announcers to come forward um, and go for it. I have an announcement on behalf of Jim and Susie Miller. Uh, they are putting together tickets for the Sacred Christmas Concert of the New Voices of Appleton to be held on Friday, December 17th in the St. Francis Xavier Cathedral in Green Bay at 7.30. For those interested, uh, we are going to be dining together prior to the concert in Angelina's restaurant, close by the cathedral. Tickets are $25 each for general admission. All concert goers must be vaccinated and wear masks for the performance. If you're interested to see Jim or Susie Miller on or before November 14th uh, next Sunday, as tickets are limited. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, one final reminder of the Women of Grace Chili Drive through next Saturday. Uh, the hours are 11 to 2. Today is the last day. If you want to do a pre order, stop at the information desk and do the pre order. If you don't do a pre order, make sure you come early because we tend to sell out quickly. So 11 to 2 uh, next Saturday. Oh, excuse me, Saturday. And also the equal exchange orders. Any of those that you decide to fill out, they can be placed in the red box at the Information Center. Thank you. And just a few other words. First, I would remind you to uh, pick up the pew pads on the aisle center and pass them down and be sure to, to, sign, to sign in. And two, this morning's music. Just a word. Remember to keep breathing. Our opening hymn is an old, familiar hymn. Some of the words are a little different. Just sing it like you've always known it, and God will be glorified. We, are, we as well will be doing a new response after the confession. I am told by the choir it is an extremely singable tune. So just listen. Keep breathing, and God will be glorified. And now, I would invite you to open your hearts, your minds, and even your lives to all that God will do in this time of worship.
I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. Putting away falsehood, let us speak truth to our neighbors, confessing our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not always been attentive to your voice. We have surrendered to our fears, abdicated our responsibilities, and sought our own way. Forgive us, help us to amend our lives so that we might walk in your way and reflect your presence in the world. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning. 
Today I, will be, today I will be reading Psalm 43. Psalm 43 is a prayer to God asking for help in times of trouble. We know that God will come to our aid, and so we pray. Show that I am right, God. Defend me against everyone who doesn't know you. Rescue me from, rescue me from each of those deceitful liars. I run to you with protection. Why have you turned me away? Why must my enemies mistreat me and make me sad? Send your light and your truth to guide me. Let them lead me to your house on your sacred mountain. Then I will worship at your altar because you make me joyful. You are my God and I will praise you. Yes, I will praise you. As I play my heart. Why am I discouraged? Why am I restless? I trust you. And I will praise you again because you help me and you are my God. Thank you. Thank you, Lance. I gotta tell you a little bit about Lance. He's our neighbor. And yesterday, all of a sudden, I heard a funny noise outside. And what's going on? And there's Lance out blowing our leaves off our lawn for us. I thank you again. <laughs> Today's gospel reading is John chapter 12, verses 23 to 28. Jesus said, the time has come for the Son of Man to be given his glory. I tell you for certain that a grain of wheat that falls on the ground will never be more than one grain unless it dies. But if it dies, it will produce lots of wheat. If you love your life, you will lose it. If you give it up in this world, you will be given eternal life. If you serve me, you must go with me. My servants will be with me whenever, wherever I am. If you serve me, my Father will honor you. Now I am deeply troubled, and I don't know what to say. But I must not, say, must not ask my Father to keep me uh, with this time of suffering. In fact, I came into the world to suffer. So Father, bring glory to yourself. A voice from heaven then said, I have already brought glory to myself, and I will do it again. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite children to come down front. I'll sit back here. How's that sound? Yeah, come on down. I think we're breaking a record this morning for at least the last few weeks. So, I, I didn't hear whatever was just said, right? That's okay. So, good morning. Tell me, have you ever felt all alone? What was it like feeling alone? I know sometimes I'd feel alone if I was in the playground and, you know, I was always the bigger kid with glasses and I didn't always get picked first on the sports team. And, and so um, I, felt, I felt alone then. Um, I went to a new school once, and I was the only kid in the class who didn't know the other kids in the class, and I felt alone. What do you do when you feel alone? Sure. Sometimes you get sad. Yeah. Me too. Anybody else? What do you do 
when you get alone, when you feel alone. Well, let me offer this. The scripture reading that I'm about to read is about a prophet named Ezekiel, but we'll just call him Zeke this morning, okay? Zeke was feeling all alone. His friends were gone. Most of his enemies were gone. The people that didn't like him were gone. And he was, he was all alone. So what he did was he ran to God. He ran to God to look for help, to find what he could do next um, and how he can find his way. Much like sometimes when I felt alone, I might have gone home to mom and said, hey mom, was rough at school today. Um, nobody wanted to play with me or I was in a new school, yeah? You were just raising your hand. Okay. So the, the lesson for us this morning is that whether we feel alone or we're surrounded by a whole lot of people, God is always there for us. He's some, God is someone we can go to um, when we feel alone, when we need direction for going ahead. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you that we are never, ever truly alone, that you are always with us at our side to lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. I know what I'm doing. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes to us from First Kings the 19th chapter, the 9th through the 16th verse. Hear now what the Spirit is saying to the church. But first I have to apologize, right? Because kids, did I tell you that this guy's name was Ezekiel and we would call him Zeke? That's what I said, right? Yeah, well, I goofed. At that place, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in places before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, 
What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Abel, as prophet in your place. Holy wisdom, holy words. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Holy and mighty God, speak to us in words, speak to us in feeling, speak to us through our touch, God, speak even in the silence. We open our hearts, our ears, our minds, our lives to you. Speak, O oh God, for your servant is listening. Amen. About a, about a decade or so, the United Church of Christ had an ad campaign. Some of you might remember it. There was a TV commercial with a little girl on the front. You know, here is the church, here is the steeple, open the doors and see all the people. Some of you may also remember that the underlying thought behind that entire campaign, while rooted in the words of John Robinson aboard the Speedwell before the pilgrims left Holland, there is more truth yet to break forth from God's holy word. The, the initiating spark for that was a phrase that came out of a letter a letter that Gracie Allen had left for her husband, George Burns, to read after she died. And in that letter was the phrase, never place a period where God has placed a comma. God is still speaking. But what do we do when God appears to be silent? When we're not sure about the path ahead? When we're concerned about the right thing to do? Or we feel all alone? What do we do with our kids? How can we best raise them? There's no manual, God. Please help. What do we do about our parents? Now that we, their children, are parenting them. What do we do, God, when we're dealing with both? There are no manuals. God, help. Speak. Give us a sign. Show us the way. Or when we're thinking about downsizing, maybe 
maybe we don't need this many square feet anymore. But what do we do? Do we move, sell and move to some smaller place? But then what when the kids and grandkids come and visit? What are we going to do? God, show me a way. Give me a sign. Help me figure out what to do. Or maybe, instead of trying to downsize, we have been downsized. What do we do, God? How am I going to feed the family? How am I going to keep a roof over our heads? Give me a sign. Tell me what to do. Ezekiel, I did it again. Elijah this morning, it's one of those prophets beginning with an E, right? Um, Elijah this morning finds himself alone. Now, there's a bit of a history to this story that um, certainly not G-rated, may not even be rated for Sunday morning, but it's there in the Bible if you care to read it, but you'll have to go to 2 Kings, or rather 1 Kings chapter 18. Look in there, and there you'll hear a story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. And Elijah decides to engage them in a game of my God is better than your God. And he has them set up a fire, but don't light it. Kill an animal and place it on the fire. And let your God, ba Baal, ignite that fire. In the meantime, I'll set a fire. I'll kill an ox and spread it over the wood. And I'll even pour water on the fire. Because my God's better than your God. Well, God swooped down and consumed the animal that Elijah had put forth. Consumed the wood. Even the text says, licked up the water that was left on the ground. He had a victory. And then maybe got a little full of himself and destroyed all the prophets of Baal. Now the queen Jezebel is upset with him. She wants his life now. Elijah is alone. He doesn't know what to do. He seek, sinks into a deep depression. So much so, he doesn't want to live anymore. And yet, he goes to God. And God runs him through, you, I'm sure you've heard this story before, of fire and earthquake. And God is not present, yet God is there in the sound of sheer silence. There, God tells Elijah, you've still got work to do. Keep going. Go appoint a new king. Go anoint someone who will follow after you. And Elijah goes. In the silence, Elijah heard God's voice. How so? How in silence did he hear anything? Well, 
in my experience, there's at least two ways I might hear God's voice. One is from within me, and the other is from without. This height is really, you know, this is a whole lot better. There was a time after having served four years in the Navy, I was debating, should I stay in or should I get out? I had the highest ranking for re-enlistment. The Navy wanted me to stay. I'd understood a call to ministry. I could stay in the Navy, and the Navy would pay for all of my classes to get my undergraduate degree so that I could get out and go to seminary. Or I could get out and go to college like most people and then on to seminary. What should I do? I was talking with a friend, Joel. And Joel said to me, he said, well, Bob, what do you really want to do? What is it that most gets you excited? Staying or leaving? thought about it. And there in the silence, I understood that what I really most wanted to do was to separate from the Navy and live my most military life beyond the ship. And then he came back to me and he said, you know, in Psalm 37, 4, it says, to seek God, and God will plant the desires of your heart. God will give you the desire to do what is right to do. And I did, and I'm ever thankful for it. But God spoke within. I will add that that within was confirmed in community. It wasn't just that, well, God told me to do something, therefore I'm going to go do it. No. It was there, it was there in community. And I was able to discern the voice of God going fo forward. Sometimes God speaks in the silence as well from without. In a little bit, we're going to share a bit of bread that doesn't speak. A bit of juice doesn't speak either. And yet, in that broken bread, we are told of a body that was broken. In that cup, we are reminded of a life that was poured out. As we take that bread in silence, we remember we are loved. We are not alone because Jesus loved us so much, loved the world so much that he gave himself for us. And so we receive, we respond by allowing Christ into our lives. In the same way, in the cup, we are reminded that the grapes of a thousand hills come together in that one little sip. In the same way, each of us as a congregation here and with Christians throughout the world, 
become one as the body of Christ in the world. So friends, the good news is simple this morning. It's not real complicated, and yet very rooted in that text that we read. When life gets rough, when we feel alone, God is there in the silence to remind us that we are God's children. We are one body. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Give ear to our words, O God. Consider our meditation. Hearken unto the voice of our cry, our sovereign and our God. For unto you do we pray. We pray, O God, for the needs of this world, that we might learn to live and love in peace with one another. 
that those who are able might be vehicles, agents of your love and your care to the world. We pray for our nation. Oh God, we pray too that here we might learn to get along with one another. That we might venture out of our silos and see the gift that is, that we name other. That we might find a commonality, a common spirit, a common hope. God, we pray for Alex and all who serve in harm's way. God, grant them protection and peace. We pray as well for all the residents at Fort McCoy. God, might we extend a welcome to this place. God, we pray for the leaders of this congregation and its search committee. God, guide us through this time of transition and point us to the new day you bring us toward. God, we pray for that candidate as well. Begin speaking to their heart. Open their mind that they might hear your call. Holy God, we are your children. And as such, we pray together as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of everybody my name is Joshua Willis uh, I'm a sitting member on the uh, on the diaconate and on behalf of the stewardship committee I'm taking a little pleasure in introducing a young woman that's near and dear to mine and my family's heart uh, Casey DeWitt is going to give her testimony Good morning. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, my name is Casey DeWitt. Um, I used to be Casey Shimalonis, which most of you probably know me as, um, until actually a year ago today. Um, I got married, so today's my one year wedding anniversary. Um, <laughs> I have been a member here for 23 years, and you're like, how's that even possible? She's like five? No. I'm, um, I've been a member here since I've been born. Um, so earlier this week, when Pastor Coley gave me a call and asked if I would do this, I was extremely nervous because the last time I gave a testimony was like nine years ago, and my life has changed so much that I could not use that same speech. So I had to write a new one. <laughs> um, so anyway, here I go. Um, I spent a long time staring at my computer screen wondering, like, I don't, I don't know what to write. What should I write? Um, so like anybody, you know, who's 20 years old, 23 years old, I went to Google. And Google said I should tell you 
um, life before knowing God, how I came to know God, and life after I received God. So like I said, I've been a part of this church since I was born, so I've always known the church. Um, even the days I didn't want to get out of bed, because, you know, I was a middle schooler, my grandma made me get up, sat me down on this side of church in the third row every Sunday at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Not even 10.30, 8 o'clock. Um, growing up um, had its ups and downs for me, but the only constant in my life for a very long time was grace, which leads me to how I came to know God. I have always known God, but I'm going to tell you how I became closer to him. I have so many experiences and stories I could share with you. Trips to St. Louis, Sunday school, youth group outings, so on and so on. But the main one, and the one that impacted me the most, was ASP, or Appalachia Service Project. Just a quick overview for those of you who don't know. ASP is a mission trip for high school youth and older that the church takes down to the mountains every year to make homes warmer, safer, and drier. I went on this trip five times from my freshman year on. Four years was in Kentucky and one year was in Tennessee. The week you spend down in Appalachia is the closest you'll ever be to someone. You sleep on air mattresses that are zero inches apart. Um, your showers are tarps. Um, you eat every single meal, cookie, ice cream cone, with, like you're always with someone. Um, you hang out together in common areas. You dance, you sing, you have fun. And it sounds fun, but by the time it's Thursday and you smell and you're tired and you just want to go home, the last thing you want to do is be near somebody. But, you know, you do it. <laughs> But even though um, there's so many good things that happen down there, um, even in the worst parts of the week, God really shines through and you find a part of yourself that you didn't know was there. Which leads me to life after finding God, or in my case, becoming closer to him. Going on that trip brought me closer to the friends I already had. It also gave me new lifelong friends that I am forever thankful for. It would take me forever to list everybody that touched my life on those trips, but I was told I only had four minutes, so I have to stop. <laughs> it is hard to describe the feelings and experiences you go through while you're down there, but the best way I know how to tell you how it made me feel is that God is around every corner. You realize in this fast and crazy life how much the small things really do matter and how they can bring you so much joy. Without this church, the, one, the wild child I once was would never be the strong person standing here today. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Uh, the stewardship uh, theme this year is because of you, the ch our church plants seeds. And in a way, Casey was one of those seeds that led my family here. My wife, uh, Stephanie, uh, attended her confirmation however many years ago, eight or nine years ago. and um, Afterwards, members of Grace reached out to us and we began coming regularly. And uh, before too long, we realized that we wanted Grace to be our spiritual home. Uh, as our relationship was sort of nurtured over the years, we wanted to give back to an organization that uh, we were and that we are grateful for. Um, not only financially, but with our time. Stephanie participates on the Board of Christian Education and other planned events like Vacation Bible School uh, and alongside serving on the diaconate, I enjoy ushering, reading the liturgy, serving communion, and you know providing efforts to the other events like Rally Day. Um, we really are a community here and the stewardship committee has mailed out uh, the pledge cards, and the, so they should either get to you soon or they have already gotten to you. Um, next Sunday is Stewardship Sunday. If you can bring those back and put them in the offering plates or turn them into the office and mail them in. Also, we have uh, some sign-up sheets for if you feel compelled to offer any of your gifts to the church, you feel like you want to be an usher or a liturgist or or give back to a church that's given you so much. Um, consider how grace has helped to, to plant a seed in you, what that means to you and what it means for the future generations of the church. Um, you know, your monetary and voluntary, uh, your monetary and volunteer contributions go to ensure that we can all continue to go, grow together.
I should have sat over on this side. You walk from over there. By the time I get here, I'm out of breath. Um, <laughs> thank you, Pastor Bob, for your message. It was very appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, th oh, thank you, Casey, for your message about, especially about uh, ASP. I can attest for the value of ASD, ASP myself. Copper Coins, thank you for your musical leadership. We appreciate it very much. I know that one comes to church to press, praise God, but I also enjoy your playing and musical abilities. Okay, let's get going here. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves the grumpy ones too. It's nice to be appreciated. We have been richly blessed. We give to, uh, to say thanks. We give as an expression of our di discipleship. We give so that others might know the love of God, the faith of Christ, and the spirit of community. For these reasons and more, the ushers will now receive our morning law offering.
please pray with me. We are blessed to be your servants, Lord. We are ready to respond to your call to provide for others. Accept these gifts to the future of your work in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace Congregational Church practices an open communion. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are invited, you are encouraged. Please come to receive this sacrament with us. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and the gift of life and for your abiding love which brings us close to you, the source of all blessing. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets. We thank you especially that in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, born of Mary, to live in our midst, to share in our suffering, and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those whom Jesus loved. We rejoice that in perfect victory over the grave, you raised Christ with power to become sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life. With the faithful in every place and time, we praise your holy name. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is broken for you, for you for you, and even for you. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Consecrate, therefore, these gifts of bread and wine and bless us that as we receive them at this table, we may offer you our faith and praise and be united with Christ and with one another and may re we remain faithful in all things. In the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life that Christ gives. Come, for all things are now ready.
presence of Christ, body and spirit, keep and preserve you to everlasting life. Let us pray. We give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at your table. Strengthen our faith. Increase our love for one another as we have been fed by the seed that became grain and then became bread. May we go out into the world to plant seeds of justice, transformation, and hope. Amen. Our worship is ended. Let the service begin. Go from this place to share the light, the life, the presence of Christ. And as you go, remember that the God who created you, the Christ who redeems you, and the spirit who empowers you goes with you this day and evermore. Amen. <laughs>